asphalt by conrad aiken read for LibriVox.org by matt perard light your cigarette then in this shadow and talk to her your arm engaged with hers heavily over your heads the eaten maple in the dead air of august strains and stirs her stone-white face in the lamplight turns toward you darkly with time-dark eyes she questions you whether this universe is what she thinks it simple and passionate and profound and true or whether as with a sound of dim disaster a plaintive music brought to a huddled fall some ancient treachery slides through the heart of things the last star falling seen from the utmost wall and you what sinister far reserves of laughter what understandings remote perplexed remain unguessed for ever by her who is your victim victim of whom you too are victim again come let us dance once more on the ancient asphalt seeing beneath its strange and recent shape the eternal horror of rock from which forever we toss our tortured hands to no escape end of poem this recording is in the public domain at minus basin by theodore harding rand read for librivox dot org by bruce Kachuk. about the buried feet of blomidon red breasted sphinx with crown of gray and green the tides of minus swirl their veiled queen fleet oared from far by galleys of the sun the tidal breeze blows its divinest gale the blue air winks with life like beaded wine storied of glooscap of evangeline each to the setting sun this sea did sail opulent day has poured its living gold till all the west is belt with crimson bars now darkness lights its silver moon and stars the festal beauty of the world new old facing the dawn in vigil that ne'er sleeps the sphinx the secret of the basin keeps end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Awakening by Angela Morgan Read for LibriVox.org by Thomas Peter You little, eager, peeping thing You embryonic point of light Pushing from out your winter night How you do make my pulses sing A tiny eye amid the gloom The merest speck I scarce had seen so doth God's rapture rend the tomb In this wee burst of April green. And lo, tis here, and lo, tis there, Spurting its jets of sweet desire In upward curling threads of fire Like tapers kindling all the air. Why, scarce it seems an hour ago These branches clashed in bitter cold, what power hath set their veins aglow? O oh, soul of mine, be bold, be bold, If from this tree, this blackened thing, Hard as the floor my feet hath pressed, This flame of joy comes clamoring, In hues as red as robin's breast, Waking to life this little twig. O oh, faith of mine, be big, be big. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Ballad of Oriana by Alfred Tennyson. Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist. 
my heart is wasted with my woe oriana there is no rest for me below oriana when the long dun wolds are ribbed with snow and loud the norland whirlwinds blow oriana alone i wander to and fro oriana ere the light on dark was growing oriana at midnight the cock was crowing oriana winds were blowing waters flowing we heard the steeds to battle going oriana aloud the hollow bugle blowing oriana in the yew wood black as night oriana ere i rode into the fight oriana while blissful tears blinded my sight by starshine and by moonlight oriana i to thee my troth did plight oriana she stood upon the castle wall oriana she watched my crest among them all oriana she saw me fight she heard me call when forth there stepped a foeman tall oriana atween me and the castle wall oriana the bitter arrow went aside oriana the false false arrow went aside oriana the damned arrow glanced aside and pierced thy heart my love my bride oriana thy heart my life my love my bride oriana oh narrow narrow was the space oriana loud loud rung out the bugle's braze oriana oh deathful stabs were dealt apace the battle deepened in its place oriana but i was down upon my face oriana they should have stabbed me where i lay oriana how could i rise and come away oriana how could i look upon the day they should have stabbed me where i lay oriana they should have trod me into clay oriana oh breaking heart that will not break oriana oh pale pale face so sweet and meek oriana thou smilest but thou dost not speak and then the tears run down my cheek oriana what wantest thou whom dost thou seek oriana i cry aloud none hear my cries oriana thou comest atween me and the skies oriana i feel the tears of blood arise up from my heart unto my eyes oriana within my heart my arrow lies oriana oh cursed hand oh cursed blow oriana oh happy thou that liest low oriana all night the silence seems to flow beside me in my utter woe oriana a weary weary way i go oriana when norland winds pipe down the sea oriana i walk i dare not think of thee oriana thou liest beneath the greenwood tree i dare not die and come to thee oriana i hear the roaring of the sea oriana end of poem this recording is in the public domain Brother Benedict by Alfred Austin Read for LibriVox.org by Algie Pug Brother Benedict rose and left his cell With the last slow swing of the evening bell. In his hand he carried his only book, And he followed the path to the abbey brook, And, crossing the stepping stones, paused midway, For the journeying water seemed to say, Benedicite. But when he stood on the other bank, the flags rose tall, and the grass grew rank, and the sorrel red and the white meadow sweet shook their dust on his sandaled feet, and, lifting their heads where his girdle hung, would surely have said, had they found a tongue, Benedicite. Onward and upward he clomb and wound, bruising the time on the nibbled ground, here and there. In the untrimmed brake, the dog rose bloomed for its own sweet sake. The woodbine clambered up out of reach, but the scent of them all breathed as plain as speech, Benedicite. Shortly he came to a leafy nook, where wind never entered, nor branch ever shook. 
itself was the only thing in sight, and the rest of the world was shut out quite. T'was a self-contained as the holy place where the children choir with upturned face Benedicite. Adele, so curtained with trunks and boughs, that in hours, when the ring-dove coos to his spouse, the sun to its heart scarce away could win. But the trees now had drawn all their shadows in. There was nothing but scent in the dewy air, and the silence seemed saying, in mental prayer, Benedicite. Against the trunk of a beech, round, smooth, and grey, Brother Benedict leaned, with intent to pray, and opened his book, with vellum bound, within, red letters on faded ground, pater and ave and saving creed, but look where you would, you seemed to read, Benedicite. He scarce had a verse of his office said, ere a bird in the branches overhead began to warble so sweet a strain, that, strive as he would, still he strove in vain to close his ears. So he closed his book, while the unseen throat to the air outshook Benedicite. T'was a song that rippled and revelled and ran ever back to the note whence it began, rising and falling, and never did stay, like a fountain that feeds on itself all day, wanting no answer, answering none, but beginning again as each verse was done, Benedicite. It brought an ecstasy into his face, it weaned his senses from time and space, it carried him off to worlds unseen, and showed him what is not, and ne'er has been, transporting his soul to those realms of calm, more blessed and blessing than even the psalm, Benedicite. Then, carolling still, it drew him thence, slowly back to the spheres of sense, but held him a while where self expires, and vague recollections and vague desires banish the burden of things that are, and angels seem canticling, faint and far, Benedicite. Then across him there flitted the days that are dead, and those that will follow when these are fled, Generations of sorrow, wave after wave, with their selfsame journey from womb to grave. Men's love of the fleshly sweets that sting, and the comfort that comes when we kneel and sing, Benedicite. He suddenly started, and gazed around, for silence can waken as well as sound, and the bird had ceased singing. The dewy air still was immersed in mental prayer. Time seemed to have stopped. So he quickened pace, but forgot not to say, ere he left the lone place, Benedicite. Downward he wended, and under his feet, as on mounting, the bruised time answered sweet. As before, in the break, the dog rose bloomed, and woodbine with fragrance the hedge perfumed and the white meadow sweet, and the sorrel red, had they found a tongue, would still surely have said, Benedicite. But where were the flags, and the tall rank grass, and a stepping stone smooth for his feet to pass? Were they swept away? Did he wake, or dream? A bridge that he knew not spanned the stream, though under its archway he still could hear the journeying waters, purling clear, Benedicite. Where had he wandered? This never could be the spot where the abbey orchard stood, where the filberts once mellowed, lay tumbled blocks, and cherry stumps peered through tears and docks. A rough plot stretched where in times gone by, the plump apples dropped to the joyous cry, Benedicite. The gateway had vanished, the portal flown, the walls of the abbey were ivy-grown, the arches were shattered, the roof was gone, the mullions were mouldering one by one. Wrecked was the oriole's tracery light that the sun streamed through when they met to recite Benedicite. Chancel and choir and nave and aisle were but one ruinous vacant pile. So utter the havoc, you could not tell which was corridor, 
cloister sell cow grass and foxglove and waving weed covered the scrolls where you used to read benedicite high up where of old the belfry towered an elder had rooted and whitely flowered surviving ruin and rain and wind below it a lichened gurgoyle grinned though birds were chirping and flitting about they paused not to treble the anthem devout benedicite then he went where the abbot was wont to lay his children to rest till the judgment day and at length in the grass the name he found of a friar he fancied alive and sound the slab was hoary the carving blurred and he rather guessed than could read the word benedicite he sat him down on a fretted stone where rains had beaten and winds had blown and opened his office book and read the prayers that we read for our loved ones dead while nightfall crept on the twilight air and darkened the page of the final prayer benedicite but to murkiest gloom when the gloaming did wane in the air there still floated a shadowy strain twas distilled with the dew it was showered from the star it was murmuring near it was tingling afar in silence it sounded in darkness it shone and in sleep that is deepest it wakeful dreamed on benedicite do you ask what had witched brother benedict's ears the bird had been singing a thousand years sweetly confounding in its sweet lay to-day to-morrow and yesterday time what is time but a fiction vain to him that o'erhears the eternal strain benedicite end of poem this recording is in the public domain buffalo bills by e e cummings read for LibriVox.org by Winston Tharp. Buffalo Bill's defunct, who used to ride a water-smooth silver stallion and break one, two, three, four, five pigeons just like that. Jesus, he was a handsome man. And what I want to know is, how do you like your blue-eyed boy, Mr. Death? End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Burden of Nineveh by Dante Gabriel Rossetti Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist In our museum galleries today I lingered o'er the prize Dead Greece vouchsafes to living eyes her art forever in fresh wise from hour to hour rejoicing me sighing i turned at last to win once more the london dirt and din and as i made the swing door spin and issued they were hoisting in a winged beast from nineveh a human face the creature wore and hoofs behind and hoofs before and flanks with dark runes fretted o'er twas bull twas mitred minotaur a dead disembowelled mystery the mummy of a buried faith stark from the charnel without scathe its wings stood for the light to bathe such fossil cerements as might swathe the very corpse of nineveh the print of its first rush wrapping wound ere it dried still ribbed the thing what song did the brown maiden sing from purple mouths alternating when that was woven languidly what vows what rites what prayers preferred what songs has the strange image heard in what blind vigil stood interred for ages till an english word broke silence first at nineveh oh when upon each sculptured court where even the wind might not resort or which time passed of like import with the wild arab boys at sport a living face looked in to see oh seemed it not the spell once broke as though the carven warriors woke as though the shaft the string forsook 
the cymbals clashed the chariots shook and there was life in nineveh on london stones our sun anew the beasts recovered shadow threw no shade that plague of darkness knew no light no shade while older grew by ages the old earth and sea lo thou could all thy priests have shown such proof to make thy godhead known from their dead past thou livest alone and still thy shadow is thine own even as of yore in nineveh that day whereof we keep record when near thy city gates the lord sheltered his jonah with a gourd this sun i said here present poured even thus this shadow that i see this shadow has been shed the same from sun and moon from lamps which came for prayer from fifteen days of flame the last while smouldered to a name sardanapalus nineveh within thy shadow haply once sennacherib has knelt whose sons smote him between the altar stones or pale semiramis her zones of gold her incense brought to thee in love for grace in war for aid ay and who else till neath thy shade within his trenches newly made last year the christian knelt and prayed not to thy strength in nineveh now thou poor god within this hall where the blank windows blind the wall from pedestal to pedestal the kind of light shall on thee fall which london takes the day to be while school foundations in the act of holiday three files compact shall learn to view thee as a fact connected with that zealous tract rome babylon and nineveh deemed they of this those worshippers when in some mythic chain of verse which man shall not again rehearse the faces of thy ministers yearned pale with bitter ecstasy greece egypt rome did any god before whose feet men knelt unshod deem that in this unblessed abode another scarce more unknown god should house with him from nineveh ah in what quarries lay the stone from which this pygmy pile has grown unto man's need how long unknown since thy vast temples court and cone rose far in desert history ah what is here that does not lie all strange to thine awakened eye ah what is here can testify save that dumb presence of the sky unto thy day and nineveh why of those mummies in the room above there might indeed have come one out of egypt to thy home an alien nay but were not some of these thine own antiquity and now they and their gods and thou all relics here together now whose prophet whether bull or cow isis or ibis who or how whether of thebes or nineveh the consecrated metals found and ivory tablets underground winged teraphim and creatures crowned when air and daylight filled the mound fell into dust immediately and even as these the images of awe and worship even as these so smitten with the sun's increase her glory mouldered and did cease from immemorial nineveh the day her builders made their halt those cities of the lake of salt stood firmly established without fault made proud with pillars of basalt with sardonyx and porphyry the day that jonah bore abroad to nineveh the voice of god a brackish lake lay in his road where erst pride fixed her sure abode as then in royal nineveh 
the day when he pride's lord and man's showed all the kingdoms at a glance to him before whose countenance the years recede the years advance and said fall down and worship me mid all the pomp beneath that look then stood there haply some rebuke where to the wind the salt pools shook and in those tracks of life forsook that knew thee not o nineveh delicate harlot on thy throne thou with a world beneath thee prone in state for ages satst alone and needs were years and lustres flown ere strength of man could vanquish thee whom even thy victor foes must bring still royal among maids that sing as with doves voices tabering upon their breasts unto the king a kingly conquest nineveh here woke my thought the wind's slow sway had waxed and like the human play of scorn that smiling spreads away the sunshine shivered off the day the callous wind it seemed to me swept up the shadow from the ground and pale as whom the fates astound the god forlorn stood winged and crowned within i knew the cry lay bound of the dumb soul of nineveh and as i turned my sense half shut still saw the crowds of curb and rut go past as marshalled to the strut of rank in gypsum quaintly cut it seemed in one same pageantry they followed forms which had been erst to pass till on my sight should burst that future of the best or worst when some may question which was first of london or of nineveh for as that bull-god once did stand and watched the burial clouds of sand till these at last without a hand rose o'er his eyes another land and blinded him with destiny so may he stand again till now in ships of unknown sail and prow some tribe of the australian plough bear him afar a relic now of london not of nineveh or it may chance indeed that when man's age is hoary among men his centuries threescore and ten his furthest childhood shall seem then more clear than later times may be who finding in this desert place this form shall hold us for some race that walked not in christ's lowly ways but bowed its pride and vowed its praise unto the god of nineveh the smile rose first anon drew nigh the thought those heavy wings spread high so sure of flight which do not fly that set gaze never on the sky those scriptured flanks it cannot see its crown a brow contracting load its planted feet which trust the sod so grew the image as i trod o nineveh was this thy god thine also mighty nineveh End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Canto One from Hell or the Inferno from the Divine Comedy by Dante Alighieri, translated by Henry Francis Carey, read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. Hell, Canto One. In the midway of this our mortal life i found me in a gloomy wood astray gone from the path direct and even to tell it were no easy task how savage wild that forest how robust and rough its growth which to remember only my dismay renews in bitterness not far from death yet to discourse of what there good befell all else will i relate discovered there how first i entered it i scarce can say 
such sleepy dullness in that instant weighed my senses down when the true path i left but when a mountain's foot i reached where closed the valley that had pierced my heart with dread i looked aloft and saw his shoulders broad already vested with that planet's beam who leads all wanderers safe through every way then was a little respite to the fear that in my heart's recesses deep had lain all of that night so pitifully passed and as a man with difficult short breath forspent with toiling scaped from sea to shore turns to the perilous wide waste and stands at gaze even so my spirit that yet failed struggling with terror turned to view the straits that none hath passed and lived my weary frame after short pause recomforted again i journeyed on over that lonely steep the hinder foot still firmer scarce the ascent began when lo a panther nimble light and covered with a speckled skin appeared nor when it saw me vanished rather strove to check my onward going that oft times with purpose to retrace my steps i turned the hour was morning's prime and on his way aloft the sun ascended with those stars that with him rose when love divine first moved those its fair works so that with joyous hope all things conspired to fill me the gay skin of that swift animal the matin dawn and the sweet season soon that joy was chased and by new dread succeeded when in view a lion came gainst me as it appeared with his head held aloft and hunger mad that even the air was fear-struck a she-wolf was at his heels who in her leanness seemed full of all wants and many a land hath made disconsolate ere now she with such fear overwhelmed me at the sight of her appalled that of the height all hope i lost as one who with his gain elated sees the time when all unawares is gone he inwardly mourns with heart griping anguish such was i haunted by that fell beast never at peace who coming over against me by degrees impelled me where the sun in silence rests while to the lower space with backward step i fell my ken discerned the form one of one whose voice seemed faint through long disuse of speech when him in that great desert i espied have mercy on me cried i aloud spirit or living man whatever thou be he answered now not man man once i was and born of lombard parents mantuana both by country when the power of julius yet was scarcely firm at rome my life was passed beneath the mild augustus in the time of fabled deities and falls a bard was i and made anchises upright son the subject of my song who came from troy when the flames preyed on ilium's haughty towers but thou say wherefore to such perils past returnest thou wherefore not this pleasant mount ascendest cause and source of all delight and art thou then that virgil that wellspring from which such copious floods of eloquence have issued i with front abashed replied glory and light of all the tuneful train may it avail me that i long with zeal have sought thy volume and with love immense have conned it over my master thou and guide thou he from whom alone i have derived that style which for its beauty into fame exalts me see the beast from whom i fled o oh, save me from her thou illustrious sage for every vein and pulse throughout my frame she hath made tremble he soon as he saw that i was weeping answered thou must needs another way pursue if thou wouldst scape from out that savage wilderness this beast at whom thou criest her way will suffer none to pass and no less hindrance makes than death so bad and so accursed in her kind that never sated is her ravenous will still after food more craving than before 
to many an animal in wedlock vile she fastens and shall yet to many more until that greyhound come who shall destroy her with sharp pain he will not life support by earth nor its base metals but by love wisdom and virtue and his land shall be the land twixt either feltro in his might shall safety to italia's plains arise for whose fair realm camilla virgin pure nisus euryalus and turnus fell he with incessant chase through every town shall worry until he to hell at length restore her thence by envy first let loose i for thy profit pondering now devise that thou mayst follow me and i thy guide will lead thee hence through an eternal space where thou shalt hear despairing shrieks and see spirits of old tormented who invoke a second death and those next view who dwell content in fire for that they hope to come whenever the time may be among the blest into whose regions if thou then desire to ascend a spirit worthier than i must lead thee in whose charge when i depart thou shalt be left for that almighty king who reigns above a rebel to his law adjudges me and therefore hath decreed that to his city none through me should come he in all parts hath sway there rules there holds his citadel and throne o oh, happy those whom there he chooses i to him in few bard by that god whom thou didst not adore i do beseech thee that this ill and worse i may escape to lead me where thou saidst that i st peter's gate may view and those who as thou tellst are in such dismal plight onward he moved i close his steps pursued end of poem this recording is in the public domain chamber music by james joyce read for LibriVox.org by Ian King and Newgate's novelist. 1. Strings in the earth and air make music sweet. Strings by the river where the willows meet. There's music along the river, for love wanders there. Pale flowers on his mantle, dark leaves on his hair. All softly playing, with head to the music bent and fingers straying upon an instrument. 2. The twilight turns from amethyst to deep and deeper blue. The lamp fills with a pale green glow the trees of the avenue. The old piano plays an air, sedate and slow and gay. She bends upon the yellow keys, her head inclines this way shy thoughts and grave wide eyes and hands that wander as they list the twilight turns to darker blue with lights of amethyst three at that hour when all things have repose o lonely watcher of the skies do you hear the night wind and the sighs of harps playing unto love to unclose the pale gates of sunrise when all things repose do you alone awake to hear the sweet harps play to love before him on his way and the night wind answering in antiphon till night is overgone play on invisible harps unto love whose way in heaven is aglow at that hour when soft lights come and go soft sweet music in the air above and in the earth below. 4. When the shy star goes forth in heaven, all maidenly, disconsolate, hear you amid the drowsy even, one who is singing by your gate. His song is softer than the dew, and he is come to visit you. O oh, bend no more in reverie, when he, at eventide, is calling, nor muse, who may this singer be, whose song about my heart is falling? Know you by this the lover's chant, 
Tis I that am your visitant. Five. Lean out of the window, golden hair. I heard you singing a merry air. My book was closed, I read no more, watching the fire dance on the floor. I have left my book, I have left my room, for I heard you singing through the gloom, singing and singing a merry air. Lean out of the window, golden hair. 6. I would in that sweet bosom be, O oh, sweet it is and fair it is, Where no rude wind might visit me, Because of sad austerities, I would in that sweet bosom be. I would be ever in that heart, O oh, soft I knock and soft entreat her, Where only peace might be my part, Austerities were all the sweeter, So I were ever in that heart. 7. My love is in a light attire among the apple trees, Where the gay winds do most desire to run in companies. There, where the gay winds stay to woo the young leaves as they pass, My love goes slowly, bending to her shadow on the grass. And where the sky's a pale blue cup over the laughing land, My love goes lightly, holding up, her dress with dainty hand. 8. Who goes amid the greenwood, With springtide all adorning her? Who goes amid the merry green wood, To make it merrier? Who passes in the sunlight, By ways that know the light footfall? Who passes in the sweet sunlight, With mien so virginal? The ways of all the woodland, Gleam with a soft and golden fire. For whom does all the sunny woodland Carry so brave attire? Oh, it is for my true love The woods their rich apparel wear. Oh, it is for my own true love That is so young and fair. 9. Winds of May that dance on the sea, Dancing a ring around in glee, from furrow to furrow, while overhead The foam flies up to be garlanded, In silvery arches spanning the air. Saw you, my true love, anywhere? Well a day, well a day, for the winds of May. Love is unhappy when love is away. 10. Bright cap and streamers, he sings in the hollow. Come follow, come follow, all you that love. Leave dreams to the dreamers that will not after, That song and laughter do nothing move. With ribbons streaming he sings the bolder, In troop at his shoulder the wild bees hum, And the time of dreaming dreams is over. As lover to lover, sweetheart, I come. 11. Bid adieu, 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 Bid adieu to girlish days. Happy love is come to woo thee And woo thy girlish ways. The zone that doth become thee fair, The snood upon thy yellow hair. When thou hast heard his name upon the bugles of the cherubim, Begin thou softly to unzone thy girlish bosom unto him, And softly to undo the snood that is the sign of maidenhood. 12. What counsel has the hooded moon put in thy heart, my shyly sweet, of love in ancient plenilune, Glory and stars beneath his feet, A sage that is but kith and kin With the comedian Capuchin. Believe me rather that am wise In disregard of the divine, A glory kindles in those eyes, Trembles to starlight. Mine, oh mine, no more be tears in moon or mist For thee, sweet sentimentalist. 13. 
go seek her out all courteously and say i come wind of spices whose song is ever epithalamium oh hurry over the dark lands and run upon the sea for seas and lands shall not divide us my love and me now wind of your good courtesy i pray you go and come into her little garden and sing at her window singing the bridal wind is blowing for love is at his noon and soon will your true love be with you soon oh soon fourteen my dove my beautiful one arise arise the night dew lies upon my lips and eyes the odorous winds are weaving a music of sighs arise arise my dove my beautiful one i wait by the cedar tree my sister my love white breast of the dove my breast shall be your bed the pale dew lies like a veil on my head my fair one my fair dove arise arise fifteen from dewy dreams my soul arise from love's deep slumber and from death for lo the trees are full of sighs whose leaves the morn admonisheth eastward the gradual dawn prevails where softly burning fires appear making to tremble all those veils of grey and golden gossamer while sweetly gently secretly the flowery bells of morn are stirred and the wise choirs of fairy begin innumerous to be heard sixteen o oh, cool is the valley now and there love will we go for many a choir is singing now where love did sometime go and hear you not the thrushes calling calling us away o oh, cool and pleasant is the valley and there love will we stay seventeen because your voice was at my side i gave him pain because within my hand i held your hand again there is no word nor any sign can make amend he is a stranger to me now who was my friend eighteen oh sweetheart hear you your lover's tale a man shall have sorrow when friends him fail for he shall know then friends be untrue and a little ashes their words come to but one unto him will softly move and softly woo him in ways of love his hand is under her smooth round breast so he who has sorrow shall have rest nineteen be not sad because all men prefer a lying clamour before you sweetheart be at peace again can they dishonour you they are sadder than all tears their lives ascend as a continual sigh proudly answer to their tears as they deny deny 20. In the dark pine wood, I would we lay, In deep cool shadow at noon of day. How sweet to lie there, sweet to kiss, Where the great pine forest enisled is. Thy kiss descending, sweeter were, With a soft tumult of thy hair. O, oh, unto the pine wood at noon of day, Come with me now, sweet love, away. 21. He who hath glory lost, 
nor hath found any soul to fellow his among his foes in scorn and wrath holding to ancient nobleness that high unconsortable one his love is his companion twenty two of that so sweet imprisonment my soul dearest is fain soft arms that woo me to relent and woo me to detain ah could they ever hold me there gladly were i a prisoner dearest through interwoven arms by love made tremulous that night allures me where alarms no wise may trouble us but sleep to dreamier sleep be wed where soul with soul lies prisoned twenty three this heart that flutters near my heart my hope and all my riches is unhappy when we draw apart and happy between kiss and kiss my hope and all my riches yes and all my happiness for there as in some mossy nest the wrens will diverse treasures keep i laid those treasures i possessed ere that mine eyes had learned to weep shall we not be as wise as they though love live but a day twenty four silently she's combing combing her long hair silently and graciously with many a pretty air the sun is in the willow leaves and on the dappled grass and still she's combing her long hair before the looking glass i pray you cease to comb out comb out your long hair for i have heard of witchery under a pretty air that makes as one thing to the lover staying and going hence all fair with many a pretty air and many a negligence twenty five lightly come or lightly go though thy heart presage thee woe veils and many a wasted sun oread let thy laughter run till the irreverent mountain air ripple all thy flying hair lightly lightly ever so clouds that wrap the veils below at the hour of even star lowliest attendants are love and laughter song confessed when the heart is heaviest twenty six thou leanest to the shell of night dear lady a divining ear in that soft choiring of delight what sound hath made thy heart to fear seemed it of rivers rushing forth from the grey deserts of the north that mood of thine o timorous is his if thou but scan it well who a mad tale bequeaths to us at ghosting hour conjurable and all for some strange name he read in purchase or in hollin's head twenty seven though i thy mithridates were framed to defy the poison dart yet must thou fold me unaware to know the rapture of thy heart and i but render and confess the malice of thy tenderness for elegant and antique phrase dearest my lips wax all too wise nor have i known a love whose praise our piping poets solemnize neither a love where may not be ever so little falsity twenty eight gentle lady do not sing sad songs about the end of love lay aside sadness and sing how love that passes is enough sing about the long deep sleep of lovers that are dead and how in the grave all love shall sleep love is a weary now twenty nine dear heart why will you use me so dear eyes that gently me upbraid still are you beautiful but oh how is your beauty raimented 
through the clear mirror of your eyes through the soft sigh of kiss to kiss desolate winds assail with cries the shadowy garden where love is and soon shall love dissolve it be when over us the wild winds blow but you dear love too dear to me alas why will you use me so thirty love came to us in time gone by when one at twilight shyly played and one in fear was standing nigh for love at first is all afraid we were grave lovers love is past that had his sweet hours many a one welcome to us now at the last the ways that we shall go upon thirty one oh it was out by donny carney when the bat flew from tree to tree my love and i did walk together and sweet were the words she said to me along with us the summer wind went murmuring oh happily but softer than the breath of summer was the kiss she gave to me thirty two rain has fallen all the day oh come among the laden trees the leaves lie thick upon the way of memories staying a little by the way of memories shall we depart come my beloved where i may speak to your heart thirty three now oh now in this brown land where love did so sweet music make we too shall wander hand in hand forbearing for old friendship's sake nor grieve because our love was gay which now is ended in this way a rogue in red and yellow dress is knocking knocking at the tree and all around our loneliness the wind is whistling merrily the leaves they do not sigh at all when the year takes them in the fall now oh now we hear no more the villanelle and roundelay yet will we kiss sweetheart before we take sad leave at close of day grieve not sweetheart for anything the year the year is gathering thirty four sleep now oh sleep now oh you unquiet heart a voice crying sleep now is heard in my heart the voice of the winter is heard at the door oh sleep for the winter is crying sleep no more my kiss will give peace now and quiet to your heart sleep on in peace now o oh, you unquiet heart thirty five all day i hear the noise of waters making moan sad as the seabird is when going forth alone he hears the winds cry to the waters monotone the grey winds the cold winds are blowing where i go i hear the noise of many waters far below all day all night i hear them flowing to and fro thirty six i hear an army charging upon the land and the thunder of horses plunging foam about their knees arrogant in black armour behind them stand 
disdaining the reins with fluttering whips the charioteers they cry unto the night their battle name i moan in sleep when i hear afar their whirling laughter they cleave the gloom of dreams a blinding flame clanging clanging upon the heart as upon an anvil they come shaking in triumph their long green hair they come out of the sea and run shouting by the shore my heart have you no wisdom thus to despair my love my love my love why have you left me alone end of poem this recording is in the public domain Thank you for listening. In This Dark House by Edward L. Davison Read for LibriVox.org by Algie Pug I shall come back to die From a far place at last After my life's carouse In the old bed to lie Remembering the past In this dark house because of a clock's chime in the long waste of night i shall awake and wait at that calm lonely time each smell and sound and sight mysterious and innate some shadow on the wall when curtains by the door move in a draught of wind or else a light footfall in a near corridor even to feel the kind caress of a cool hand smoothing the draggled hair back from my shrunken brow and strive to understand the woman's presence there and whence she came and how what gust of wind that night shall mutter her lost name through windows open wide and twist the flickering light of a soul candle's flame smoking from side to side till the last spark it blows sets a moth's wings aflare as the faint flame goes out some distant door may close perhaps a heavy chair on bare floors dragged about or the low ceiling sound and a thin twig of a tree knock on my window pane till all the night around is listening with me while like a noise of rain leaves rustle in the wind then from the inner gloom the scratching of a mouse may echo down my mind and sound around the room in this dark house the vague scent of a flower smelt then in that warm air from gardens drifting in may slowly overpower the vapid lavender till feebly i begin to count the scents i knew and name them one by one and search the names for this dreams will be swift and few ere that last night be done and gradual silences in each long interim of halting time awake confuse all conscious sense shadows will grow more dim and sound and scent forsake the dark ere dawn commence in the new morning then so fixed the stare and fast the calm unseeing eye will never close again I shall come back at last to this dark house to die. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Day and Night by Theodore Harding Rand. Read for LibriVox.org by Bruce Gachuk and so the strife goes on from age to age in ceaseless round of victory and defeat young day comes forth sun-clad with shining feet in beauteous pomp and throws his battle gauge grim ancient night distraught and blind with rage twanging her dreadful bow flies in retreat wrapped round with raven darkness 
as a sheet till from the east she may the duel wage so night pursuing wounded day takes breath to find his blood-stained mantle in the west and dusks it o'er with plumed shafts of death secure beneath the horizon's verge in wrath he wings a parthian arrow back his path and dies with crimson ethiop's jewelled vest end of poem this recording is in the public domain Easter Road by Henry Van Dyke. Read for LibriVox.org by Bill Mosley, Llano County, Texas, USA. 1918. Under the cloud of worldwide war, while earth is drenched with sorrow, I have no heart for idle merrymaking or for the fashioning of glad raiment. I will retrace the divine footmarks on the road of the first easter down through the valley of utter darkness dripping with blood and tears over the hill of the skull the little hill of great anguish the ambuscade of death into the no man's land of hades bearing dispatches of hope to spirits in prison mortally stricken and triumphant went the faithful captain of salvation then upward swiftly upward victory liberty glory the feet that were wounded walked in the tranquil garden bathed in dew and the light of deathless dawn o oh, my soul my comrades soldiers of freedom follow the pathway of easter for there is no other follow it through to peace yea follow it fighting this armageddon is not darker than calvary the day will break when the dragon is vanquished he that exalteth himself as god shall be cast down and the lords of war shall fall and the long long terror be ended victory justice peace enduring they that die in this cause shall live for ever and they that live shall never die they shall rejoice together in the easter of a new world march thirty first nineteen eighteen end of poem this recording is in the public domain exhortation summer nineteen nineteen by claude mckay read for librivox dot org by Nemo. Exhortation, Summer, 1919. Through the pregnant universe rumbles life's terrific thunder, and earth's bowels quake with terror. Strange and terrible storms break. Lightning torches flame the heavens, kindling souls of men thereunder. Africa, long ages sleeping, O oh, my motherland, awake! In the east the clouds grow crimson with the new dawn that is breaking, and its golden glory fills the western skies. O oh, my brothers and my sisters, wake, arise! For the new birth rends the old earth, and the very dead are waking. Ghosts have turned flesh, throwing off the grave's disguise, and the foolish, even children, are made wise. For the big earth groans in travail for the strong new world in making. O oh, my brothers, dreaming for dim centuries, wake from sleeping. To the east, turn, turn your eyes. O oh, the night is sweet for sleeping, but the shining days for working. Sons of the seductive night, for your children's children's sake, from the deep primeval forest where the crouching leopards lurking lift your heavy-lidded eyes ethiopia awake in the east the clouds glow crimson 
with the new dawn that is breaking and its golden glory fills the western skies o oh, my brothers and my sisters wake arise for the new birth rends the old earth and the very dead are waking ghosts have turned flesh throwing off the grave's disguise and the foolish even children are made wise for the big earth groans in travail for the strong new world in making o oh, my brothers dreaming for long centuries wake from sleeping to the east turn turn your eyes and a poem this recording is in the public domain faith by george herbert read for LibriVox.org by phil Schempf. lord how couldst thou so much appease thy wrath for sin as when man's sight was dim and could see little to regard his ease and bring by faith all things to him hungry i was and had no meat i did conceit a most delicious feast i had it straight and did as truly eat as ever did a welcome guest there is a rare outlandish root which when i could not get i thought it here that apprehension cured so well my foot that i can walk to heaven well near i owed thousands and much more i did believe that i did nothing owe and lived accordingly my creditor believes so too and lets me go faith makes me anything or all that i believe is in the sacred story and where sin placeth me in adam's fall faith sets me higher in his glory if i go lower in the book what can be lower than the common manger faith puts me there with him who sweetly took our flesh and frailty death and danger if bliss had lean in art or strength none but the wise or strong had gained it where now by faith all arms are of a length one size doth all conditions fit a peasant may believe as much as a great clerk and reach the highest stature thus dost thou make proud knowledge bend and crouch while grace fills up uneven nature when creatures had no real light inherent in them thou didst make the sun impute a lustre and allow them bright and in this show what christ hath done that which before was darkened clean with bushy groves pricking the looker's eye vanished away when faith did change the scene and then appeared a glorious sky what though my body run to dust faith cleaves unto it counting every grain with an exact and most particular trust reserving all for flesh again end of poem this recording is in the public domain Flash by Hazel Hall. Read for LibriVox.org by Winston Tharp. I am less of myself and more of the sun. The beat of life is wearing me into an incomplete oblivion, yet not to the certain dignity of death. They cannot even die who have not lived. The hungry jaws of space snap at my unlearned eye, and time tears in my flesh like claws. If I am not life's, if I am not death's, out of chaos I must re-reap the burden of untasted breaths. Who has not waked may not yet sleep. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Gavotte in D minor by Amy Lowell, read for LibriVox.org by Matt Perrar. She wore purple, and when other people slept, she stepped lightly, lightly, in her ruby-powdered slippers, along the flags of the east portico, and the moon slowly rifting the heights of cloud touched her face so that she bowed her head and held her hand to her eyes to keep the white shining from her. And she was wise, 
for gazing at the moon was like looking on her own dead face passing alone in a wide place chill and uncosseted always above the hot protuberance of life love to her was morning and a great stir of trumpets and tire-women and sharp sun as she had begun so she would end walking alone to the last bend where the portico turned the wall and her slippers sound was scarce as loud upon the ground as her tears fall her long white fingers crisped and clung each to each and her weary tongue rattled always the same cold speech gold was not made to lie in grass silver dents at the touch of brass the days pass lightly softly wearily the lady paces drearily listening to the half shrill croon leaves make on a moony autumn night when the windy light runs over the ivy eerily a branch at the corner cocks an opsing eye as she passes passes by and by a hand stretches out from a column's edge faces float in a phosphorant wedge through the points of arches and there is speech in the carven roof groins out of reach a love word a lust word shivers and mocks the placid stroke of the village clocks does the lady hear is any one near she jeers at life must she wed instead the cold dead a marriage bed of moist green mould with an overhead tester of beaten gold a splendid price for a splendid scorn a tombstone pedigree snarled with thorn clouding the letters in the florida leaf she will have them in granite for her heart's chill ease i set the candle in a draught of air and watched it swell to the last thin flare they laid her in a fair chamber hung with arras and they wept her virgin soul the arras was woven of the story of menos and dictina but i grieved that i could no longer hear the shuffle of her feet along the portico and the ruffling of her train against the stones End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Hymn of Creation by Miss Frank Miller Taken from Carl Gustav Jung's Psychology of the Unconscious Read for LibriVox.org When the Eternal first made sound, a myriad ears sprang out to hear and throughout all the universe there rolled an echo deep and clear all glory to the god of sound when the eternal first made light a myriad eyes sprang out to look and hearing ears and seeing eyes once more a mighty choral took all glory to the god of light when the eternal first gave love a myriad hearts sprang into life ears filled with music eyes with light pealed forth with hearts with love all rife all glory to the god of love end of poem this recording is in the public domain immortality by hezekiah butterworth read for librivox dot org by thomas peter written after listening to the organ tempest of lucerne we came to fair Lucerne at even. How beauteous was the scene! The snowy Alps, like walls of heaven, rose o'er the Alps of green. The damask sky, a roseate light, flashed on the lake, and low above Mount Pilate's shadowy height, night bent her silver bow. We turned towards the faded fane how many centuries old and entered as the organ strain along the arches rolled such as when guardian spirits bear a soul to realms of light and melts in the immortal air the anthem of their flight then followed strains so sweet 
so sadly sweet and low that they seemed like memory's music and the chords of long ago a light wind seemed to rise a deep gust followed soon as when a dark cloud flies across the sun at noon it filled the aisles each drew his garments round his form we could not feel the wind that blew but only hear the storm then we cast a curious eye towards the window's lights and saw the lake serenely lie beneath the crystal heights fair rosy alps of white above the alps of green the slopes lay bright in the sun of night and the peaks in the sun unseen a deep sound shook the air as when the tempest breaks upon the peaks while sunshine fair is dreaming in the lakes then like a fateful wing there rose a wind so drear its troubled spirit seemed to bring the shades of darkness near we looked towards the windows old calm was the eve of june on the summits shone the twilight's gold and on pilot shone the moon a sharp note's lightning flash upturned the startled face when a mighty thunder crash with horror filled the place from arch to arch the peal was echoed loud and long then o'er the pathway seemed to steal another seraph's song and mid the thunder's crash and the song's enraptured flow we still could hear with charmed ear the organ playing low as past the thunder peal came raindrops falling near a rain one could not feel a rain that smote the ear and we turned to look again towards the mountain wall when a deep tone shook the fane like the avalanche's fall loud piped the wind fast poured the rain the very earth seemed riven and wildly flashed and yet again the smiting fires of heaven and cheeks that wore the light of smiles when slowly rose the gale like pulseless statues lined the aisles and as forms of marble pale the organ's undertones still sounded sweet and low and the calm of a more than mortal trust with the rhythms seemed to flow the master's mirrored face was lifted from the keys as if more holy was the place as he touched the notes of peace then the sympathetic reeds the sweet enchantment wrought as the senses met the needs and the touch of human thought the organ whispered sweet the organ whispered low fear not god's love is with thee though tempests round thee blow and the soul's grand power twas ours to trace and its deathless hopes discern as we gaze that night on the living face of the organ of lucerne then from the church it passed that strange and ghostly storm and a parting beam the twilight cast through the windows bright and warm the music grew more clear our gladdened pulses swaying when alpine horns we seemed to hear on all the hillsides playing we left the church how fair stole on the eve of june cool rigi in the dusky air the low descending moon no breath the lake cerulean stirred no cloud could i discern the alps were silent we had heard the organ of lucerne soon passed the night the high peak shone a wall of glass and fire and morning from her summer zone illumined tower and spire 
I walked beside the lake again, along the alpine meadows, then sought the old melodious vein beneath the Rigi's shadows. The organ, spanned by arches quaint, rose silent, cold, and bare, like the pulseless tomb of a vanished saint. The master was not there. But the soul's grand power t'was mine to trace, and its deathless hopes discern, as I gazed that morn on the still, dead face of the organ of Lucerne. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. In Just by E. E. Cummings Read for LibriVox.org by Winston Tharp. In just spring, when the world is mud luscious, the little lame balloon man whistles far and wee, and Eddie and Bill come running from marbles and piracies, and it's spring, when the world is puddle wonderful. The queer old balloon man whistles far and wee, and Betty and Isbel come dancing from hopscotch and jump rope, and it's spring and the goat-footed balloon man whistles far and wee. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Interim by Edna St. Vincent Millay Writ for LibriVox.org by Peter Yearsley The room is full of you. As I came in and closed the door behind me, all at once a something in the air, intangible, yet stiff with meaning, struck my senses sick. Sharp, unfamiliar odours have destroyed each other room's dear personality. The heavy scent of damp, funereal flowers, the very essence, hush distilled of death has strangled that habitual breath of home whose expiration leaves all houses dead. And wheresoe'er I look is hideous change, save here, here t'was as if a weed-choked gate had opened at my touch, and I had stepped into some long-forgot, enchanted, strange, sweet garden of a thousand years ago, and suddenly thought, I have been here before. You are not here. I know that you are gone, and will not ever enter here again. And yet it seems to me, if I should speak, your silent step must wake across the hall. If I should turn my head, that your sweet eyes would kiss me from the door. So short a time to teach my life its transposition to this difficult and unaccustomed key. The room is as you left it, your last touch, a thoughtless pressure, knowing not itself as saintly, hallows now each simple thing, hallows and glorifies, and glows between the dust's grey fingers like a shielded light. There is your book, just as you laid it down, face to the table. I cannot believe that you are gone. Just then it seemed to me you must be here. I almost laughed to think how like reality the dream had been, yet knew before I laughed, and so was still. That book outspread just as you laid it down. Perhaps you thought, I wonder what comes next, and whether this or this will be the end so rose and left it thinking to return perhaps that chair when you arose and passed out of the room rocked silently a while ere it again was still when you were gone for ever from the room perhaps that chair stirred by your movement rocked a little while silently to and fro and here are the last words your fingers wrote, scrawled in broad characters across a page in this brown book I gave you. Here your hand, guiding your rapid pen, moved up and down. Here, with a looping knot, you crossed a T, and here another like it, 
just beyond these two eccentric e's you were so small and wrote so brave a hand how strange it seems that of all words these are the words you chose and yet a simple choice you did not know you would not write again if you had known but then it does not matter and indeed if you had known there was so little time you would have dropped your pen and come to me and this page would be empty and some phrase other than this would hold my wonder now yet since you could not know and it befell that these are the last words your fingers wrote there is a dignity some might not see in this i picked the first sweet pea to-day to-day was there an opening bud beside it you left until to-morrow oh my love the things that withered and you came not back that day you filled this circle of my arms that now is empty oh my empty life that day that day you picked the first sweet pea and brought it in to show me i recall with terrible distinctness how the smell of your cool gardens drifted in with you i know you held it up for me to see and flushed because i looked not at the flower but at your face and when behind my look you saw such unmistakable intent you laughed and brushed your flower against my lips you were the fairest thing god ever made i think and then your hands above my heart drew down its stem into a fastening and while your head was bent i kissed your hair i wonder if you knew beloved hands somehow i cannot seem to see them still somehow i cannot seem to see the dust in your bright hair what is the need of heaven when earth can be so sweet if only god had let us love and show the world the way strange cancellings must ink the eternal books when love crossed out will bring the answer right that first sweet pea i wonder where it is it seems to me i laid it down somewhere and yet i'm not sure i'm not sure even if it was white or pink for then twas much like any other flower to me save that it was the first i did not know then that it was the last if i had known but then it does not matter strange how few after all's said and done the things that are of moment few indeed when i can make of ten small words a rope to hang the world i had you and i have you now no more there there it dangles where's the little truth that can for long keep footing under that when its slack syllables tighten to a thought here let me write it down i wish to see just how a thing like that will look on paper i had you and i have you now no more oh little words how can you run so straight across the page beneath the weight you bear how can you fall apart whom such a theme has bound together and hereafter aid in trivial expression that have been so hideously dignified would god that tearing you apart would tear the thread i strung you on would god oh god my mind stretches asunder on this merciless rack of imagery oh let me sleep a while would i could sleep and wake to find me back in that sweet summer afternoon with you summer tis summer still by the calendar how easily could god if he so willed set back the world a little turn or two correct its griefs and bring its joys again we were so wholly one i had not thought that we could die apart i had not thought that i could move and you be stiff and still that i could speak and you perforce be dumb i think our heart-strings were like warp and woof 
in some firm fabric woven in and out your golden filaments in fair design across my duller fibre and to-day the shining strip is rent the exquisite fine pattern is destroyed part of your heart aches in my breast part of my heart lies chilled in the damp earth with you i have been torn in two and suffer for the rest of me what is my life to me and what am i to life a ship whose star has guttered out a fear that in the deep night starts awake perpetually to find its senses strained against the taut strings of the quivering air awaiting the return of some dread chord dark dark is all i find for metaphor all else were contrast save that contrast's wall is down and all opposed things flow together into a vast monotony where night and day and frost and thaw and death and life are synonyms what now what now to me are all the jabbering birds and foolish flowers that clutter up the world you were my song now let discord scream you were my flower now let the world grow weeds for i shall not plant things above your grave the common balm of the conventional woe for its own wound amid sensations rendered negative by your elimination stands to-day certain unmixed the element of grief i sorrow and i shall not mock my truth with travesties of suffering nor seek to effigy its incorporeal bulk in little wry-faced images of woe i cannot call you back and i desire no utterance of my immaterial voice i cannot even turn my face this way or that and say my face is turned to you i know not where you are i do not know if heaven hold you or if earth transmute body and soul you into earth again but this i know not for one second's space shall i insult my sight with visionings such as the credulous crowd so eager-eyed beholds self-conjured in the empty air let the world wail let drip its easy tears my sorrow shall be dumb what do i say god 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 pity me am i gone mad that i should spit upon a rosary am i become so shrunken would to god i too might feel that frenzied faith whose touch makes temporal the most enduring grief though it must walk a while as is its wont with wild lamenting would i too might weep where weeps the world and hangs its piteous wreaths for its new dead not truth but faith it is that keeps the world alive if all at once faith were to slacken that unconscious faith which must i know yet be the cornerstone of all believing birds now flying fearless across would drop in terror to the earth fishes would drown and the all-governing rains would tangle in the frantic hands of god and the worlds gallop headlong to destruction oh god i see it now and my sick brain staggers and swoons how often over me flashes this breathlessness of sudden sight in which i see the universe unrolled before me like a scroll and read thereon chaos and doom where helpless planets whirl dizzily round and round and round and round like tops across a table gathering speed with every spin to waver on the edge one instant looking over and the next to shudder and lurch forward out of sight ah oh, i am worn out i am wearied out it is too much i am but flesh and blood and i must sleep though you were dead again i am but flesh and blood and i must sleep End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Little Lamb by William Blake. Read for LibriVox.org by Helen C. Ferrara. For Jean.
Little lamb, who made thee? Dost thou know who made thee? Gave thee life, and bid thee feed, By the stream, or by the mead? Gave thee clothing of delight, Softest clothing, woolly bright, Gave thee such a tender voice, Making all the vales rejoice. Little lamb, who made thee? Dost thou know who made thee? Little lamb, I'll tell thee. Little lamb, I'll tell thee. He is called by thy name, For he calls himself a lamb. He is meek, and he is mild. He became a little child. I a child, and thou a lamb, we are called by his name. Little lamb, God bless thee. Little lamb, God bless thee. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Little People, an Alphabet by T. W. H. Crosland Read for LibriVox.org by Algie Pug A for Arab this Arab is upset, I fear. Look at his pretty shield and spear. He stuck two pistols in his sash. And, dear me, how his eyes do flash. At home he has a horse to ride. To scour the desert is his pride. His horse is of the purest breed. Some people call his horse a steed. B for boar. Here is your little brother boar. Of course you've heard of him before. He has a naughty Uncle Paul, who used to want to eat us all. Although he does not wear a tie, he's just as white as you or I, and just as fond of cake and fruit, the difference is that he can shoot. C for China Boy Lee has a pigtail and a fan, and yet he's not a Chinaman. In fact, he is his mother's joy, a merry little China Boy. His father is a Mandarin, his father's name is Lu Tu Sin. They put no sugar in his tea, yet he's as good as good can be. D for Dutch. Miss Gretchen Grupel. She is Dutch. In Holland there are many such. Her shoes are wooden, like the floor. How nice she keeps her pinafore. She says that there is nothing finer than the Dutch queen, Wilhelmina. She says that she has never seen a sweeter queen than Wilhelmina. E for English. The English are a splendid race, sturdy of limb, honest of face. They own, this is geography, much of the land and all the sea. That is to say, they rule the waves, they never, never will be slaves. They're brave, but do not want to fight, and if you're English, you're all right. F for French. The French can cook and fence and dance, they're fond of shouting, Long live France! They make the prettiest hats and frocks, also French pickles and French clocks. They shave their poodles, drink much wine, and laugh a great deal when they dine. French boys play soldiers now and then, and must be soldiers when they're men. G for German. Hans, as you see, to town has been, his waistcoat's red, his sunshade green, he lives beside the river Isa and calls his emperor the Kaiser. In Germany no end of toys are made for English girls and boys. The English children merely break them. Hans sits at home and helps to make them. H for Hungarian. In Hungary they hunt and fish. Between ourselves I often wish I lived there, for it must be grand. I've heard the blue Hungarian band. In Hungary, a boy wears white blouses, his knickers fit him tight. He has top boots of patent leather, and in his hat, a peacock's feather. I for Indian. The Indian boy is neatly dressed. He has no shirt. He wears a crest of eagle feathers on his head. His skin is of a coppery red. If you said to him, you and I will run and catch a butterfly, the Indian boy would say, no, no, I wish to chase the buffalo. J for Japanese. The little Japs are rather small, even their fathers are not tall. They're very fond of parasols, they dress themselves just like their dolls. 
They live beneath the sunniest skies, their hair is black to match their eyes, their robes are black to match their hair, and oh, what tiny shoes they wear. K for Kaffir. This Kaffir looks a trifle sly, he smiles and smiles, I wonder why. Perhaps he's playing at a game, or thinking of his long, long name. His name, you know, is Washington, Nebuchadnezzar, Solomon, Sambo, Snowball, Timothy, Jack, Adolphus, Rule, Britannia, Black. L for Laplander I think the Laplander is nice. He lives among the snow and ice. The reindeer drags his sledge for him, and gives him meat and milk to skim. His spears are sharp, they shine like steel. He hunts the walrus and the seal. Often, when he has time to spare, he hunts the white or polar bear. M for Mexican The plucky little Mexican rides on the pampas like a man. His horse may kick and plunge and rear. He does not feel the least bit queer. If he should see an old grey goose, or a young turkey running loose, you may be pretty certain that he'd catch it with his lariat. End for Neapolitan The Neapolitan is wise. He plays the pipes for pence and buys ice cream and candy every day to help him on his weary way. His tunes are chiefly of one note. He has a sheepskin for a coat. His water bottle's painted yellow. He is a handsome little fellow. Oh, for Odalisque! Our pretty little Odalisque, I know you want to dance and frisk, and play at hide-and-seek with me, and yet, you know, it cannot be, unless, unless, my dear, you choose to put away those curious shoes, also your coat and cap and veil, they'd hang up nicely on a nail. P for Persian. The Persian has a funny hat, he often sits upon a mat, he hears the bulbul sing and roves through rose gardens and lemon groves. Child, if by any chance you meet a little Persian in the street, do not be rude and cry, Ya, ya, but ask him if he's seen the Shah. Q for Quakeress. I like the little Quakeress. She is so quaint. I like her dress, her very, very plain white bonnet, her stuffed gown with no trimming on it. Her hands are pink and soft and small. They peep out from her dark green shawl. She lives on milk and bread and honey. She must be saving pots of money. Ah, for Russian. Russia is noted for its tar, its leather, and its great white czar. A Russian wears his clothes quite loose and drinks his tea with lemon juice. The Russian boys have chubby faces. They play at marbles and run races. The climate sometimes makes them cough. They've names like Shufsky and Popoff. S for Scotch. The Scotch wear kilts, both boys and men. When they don't know, they dinner ken. They love the thistle, we the rose. They're fond of oatmeal, kale and brose. In war the Scotch are very bold. Burns was a Scot, who I am told, wrote verses and ploughed fields by turns. So every Scot is proud of Burns. T for Tyrolean. The Tyrol has a splendid air, And mountains, mountains everywhere. The mountains are all tops and sides, You climb them best with ropes and guides. The Tyrolean's hat is smart, He yodels and is light of heart. His yodelling is very sweet, His stockings haven't any feet. U for United States. The states are full of mush and pie, and houses twenty stories high. Sawmills and millionaires and bustle, the people there have got to hustle. The business of the states is done exclusively by telephone, and that is why the people say, I guess we're cute in USA. V for Valencian. Valencia is a little town in Spain, it's dusty and baked brown, and full of dirt and mules and fleas, and all around are orange trees. This well-fed boy, as you may see, has been dressed very carefully. His garments show that he's a don. He knows that he has got them on. W for Welshman. Taffy, my boy, I've heard with grief that shocking tale about the beef. 
For Taffy, between me and you, I really don't believe it's true. I'm told that there are pretty vales, and hills with sheep on them in Wales. Oh, Taffy, Taffy, don't be put on. You can't want beef while you've Welsh mutton. Z for Zany a zany is a kind of clown who wanders idly up and down and wags his head and shakes his bells and shortles at the tales he tells he'll joke with you in sun or shower and keep you laughing by the hour some zanies are a trifle mad now we have finished and i'm glad d w h c end of poem this recording is in the public domain. The Loon by George Charles Selden Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo The Loon On wooded height the slanting light In glinting, gleaming radiance falls And softly sifts through opening rifts that cleave the fog bank's hazy walls the splendor thrills from purple hills and lights the grassy circling swell but hist awake from off the lake the loon's wild cries with sprite-like spell in bluest sky the fleece clouds lie in floating fancies slow unfolding the village spires tipped with fire reflections bright from golden moulding while close around in slumber bound the roofs of modest mansions rise the silence breaks from off the lakes on rippled reach the loon's wild cries <coughs> oh tell me why i weary cry a world so peaceful fair and pure must still be rife with crime and strife why sin and sorrow must endure why labor's slave whose spirits crave such beauty ne'er can steal a glance my soul reply the loon's wild cry again returned in echo's chance end a poem this recording is in the public domain the moth to the sun by miss frank miller taken from carl gustav young's psychology of the unconscious read for LibriVox .org. the moth to the sun i longed for thee when first i crawled to consciousness my dreams were all of thee when in the chrysalis i lay oft myriads of my kind beat out their lives against some feeble spark once caught from thee and one hour more and my poor life is gone yet my last effort as my first desire shall be but to approach thy glory then having gained one raptured glance i'll die content for i the source of beauty warmth and life have in his perfect splendor once beheld end of poem this recording is in the public domain Martin in Pavel by Charles Godfrey Leland Read for Liberox Dodog by Long Yang Great thoughts are oft expressed in fused words and I remember how long years ago my great lady in her diary of short visit to the Scottish land recorded of a surf event. Today Pearly the Wakey by Miss Charles sat on a wasp's nest. All the newspapers declared it was a perfect masterpiece of excellent consciousness. Yet I think it was outdone by a Red Indian, one of the Gordy tribal, who did the same, since he likely the wakey also sat upon a set at heart, and when he rose, briefly exclaimed in his vernacular, Na kikku, and being at it what this meant me responded in the english town heap hill oh reader if the soul of weight be brevity the indian was there and the poem 
This recording is in the public domain. Mystery by Theodore Harding Rand Read for LibriVox.org by Bruce Kachuk O veiled enchantress of my days and nights, That in sweet wonder's realm of witchery To fairer visions ever beckons me, Thou'st left the valleys for the rugged heights, a gladsome youth, the hill of thy delights, Winged my lithe spirit to speed after thee. But now, come down, close veiled mystery, The garish sun but withers and affrights. I feel thy charm, shy and elusive one, As in the gleaming springtide of my life, Whose zest was all thy unattained pursuit still flit before me till the race is run and when with doubt the common day is rife thy wonder wand set thick with flower and fruit end of poem this recording is in the public domain